Hello, and welcome to Explaining the Scriptures here at the Prayer of Faith Ministry. Today, I'm going to be explaining Romans chapter 8, verses 26 and 27. And we're going to start by reading the scripture. It says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weaknesses. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, but the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. Now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is, because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. Now this, as so many much other of Scripture, has been so twisted. It's been, you know, a very controversial passage, and as much of the Bible is. But a lot of people don't really understand what this is talking about. Well, I want to, you know, uh, help you to have an understanding of what this means. I want to explain this scripture to you so that you can have, you know, an understanding. It says that, likewise, the Spirit helps in our weaknesses. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought to, but the Spirit makes intercession for us. Well, think about this. In You know, in the natural realm, a lot of times when you're just praying in the natural, a lot of times you r arrive at a roadblock because the flesh gets in the way and you just don't know what to pray. That's when you allow the Holy Spirit to take over. When you pray in your prayer language of tongues, because what happens is it bypasses your natural thinking and it goes straight to the throne of the Father. And it is a perfect prayer. That's the only time you can pray a perfect prayer is when you pray in the Spirit because it's the Holy Spirit praying through you the perfect will of God. You may not understand it yourself. You don't understand it. But guess what? The devil doesn't either. See, that this is a spiritual weapon. Praying in tongues, praying in your prayer language, that prayer language that you have given when you were baptized in the Holy Spirit is a spiritual weapon against the enemy because that's the kind of, that's the prayer he can't thwart. Because when you're praying the natural, he can hear you and he can try to, you know, bring all kinds of things to interrupt you, all kinds of uh, hindrances and things like that. But when you pray in the Spirit, guess what? Again, it bypasses your natural mind and it goes th straight to the throne room of the Father. And guess what? It is the perfect will of God being prayed. You know, your, your vocal cords are speaking, you're using, but it's the Holy Spirit who is speaking through you. The perfect will of the Father. Think about it. Because we have weaknesses. The flesh gets in the way. Sometimes you pray and pray and just don't know what else to pray. That's when you need to say, Holy Spirit, you take over because you know what to pray. Think about it. He says, now he who searches the hearts knows what the mind of the Spirit is. He knows what what you know that we need to pray he knows what situations that we need to you know find victory in that we need to find you know that place where we move past the roadblocks and get to the place of victory it says because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of god there's the key according to the will of god so a lot of times you know in our you know in our fleshly mindsets we just pray things that are not according to the will of god they're just according to what we think you know we need in our lives what we think you know should be the outcome of things well that's we had to put that aside that's just nothing but the flesh the bible says you know the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak and that's the absolute truth the flesh is so weak the flesh you know wants to have a pity power a lot of time the flesh just prays things that don't line up with god's word that's why we need the holy spirit that's why we need you need if you haven't been to be baptized in the holy spirit with the evidence of tongues to receive your prayer language so that you can have that that, that deeper walk with God, that boldness. Jesus said that I that when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, you will see power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you to be a better witness, to be a bold witness, to move in the gifts of the Spirit, to be able to walk in victory. That's why it's important that we pray daily. You know, yes, in our understanding, you know, in our natural prayer time, but also pray in the Spirit, pray in tongues, that prayer language that you've been given, that you can pray in any time, in anywhere, because you are speaking to yourself and to God. The Bible says that we're speaking mysteries. Yeah, you may not understand it. Doesn't matter. God does, and He moves mightily when you allow the Holy Spirit to move through you. Like again, like I said, you're going to arrive at roadblocks, but not in the Spirit. In the flesh, you will. A lot of times, you know, you can pray and pray and pray, and then you just don't know what else to pray. Well, allow the Holy Spirit to take over. Allow Him to pray through you, as the Bible says, the perfect will of God. It's according to His will. Like I said, we sometimes pray things, and yes, they're according to God's will because we're praying the scriptures. But no times we just pray things that, you know, that come up in our own thinking, and they don't line up with God's word. And a lot of times, you know, the enemy, he'll work with that because, like I said, he can work with anything. If you, if you give the devil an inch, then he becomes a ruler in your life. Well, we need to stop allowing the devil to become a ruler in our life. We need to start taking authority over him and allow the Holy Spirit to move through us. 
to allow our prayers to be effective. A lot of people are praying all kinds of, of mealy mouth prayers and there's no effectiveness. They don't see results. Or they pray generic prayers. And like I always say, generic prayer doesn't work. Oh, it might be like putting a Band-Aid on it. It might feel good for a, a moment, but it's not going to be lasting. You need Holy Spirit surgery. We need to, to get to the root of things. And the biggest way you're going to get to the root of things is allowing the Holy Spirit to pray through you the perfect will of God. Allowing your vocal cords to be used by the Holy Spirit. Again, I can't say I can't stress this enough. It bypasses your natural mind and it goes straight, straight to the throne room of the Father. And that's the only time you're going to pray a 100 percent perfect prayer is when you're praying in the spirit. Because guess what? The Holy Spirit doesn't make mistakes. The Holy Spirit is not a flesh. He is God Almighty. We have Father, Son and Holy Spirit, one God in three persons. And when we allow him to pray through us, guess what? We can move past the hindrances. We move past every roadblock. We move past every fork in the road. And he steps in and prays the perfect will of God for whatever situation that we're praying for at that moment. And like I said, and the devil, that's the, the thing that always excites me is he can't understand it. He can't understand when you're speaking in tongues. We don't even understand it, but God does. That's the important thing. We need to allow him to move through us so that we can, you know, receive victory in every area. Not just some areas, not just, you know, once in a while. No, every area, every time. Because we're supposed to be king's kids. We're supposed to be those who are born again. Those who are blood-bought and spirit-filled. Those who are the warriors and the sons of light. And if we're not immersed in God's word, if we're not having an understanding, that's why I do these programs to explain these scriptures. Because it's not just enough just to read them and to say, oh, that, well, that's good. We need to know what they're saying. We need to know how to apply them to our lives. And it's important that we have that understanding. Because if we don't, then guess what? Satan comes in and he will steal the word that's been sown in your heart. He will bring his corruption and he will use people. That's why there's so many, you know, excuse me, denominations out there that want to say that tongues have ceased and that miracles have passed away, signs and wonders have passed away. Well, I don't know what Bible they're reading. They're not reading the Bible I'm reading. Because in Mark 16, it says that these signs will follow those who believe. Are you a believer? It says you will, you will cast out demons. You will speak with new tongues. There's your prayer language. You will be unharmed by anything deadly. You will be those who lay your hands on the sick and the sick will recover. You will evict demonic false doctrines. You will be victorious. And this is something that we have to have an understanding about. So when you come to, to scripture passages, such as the one we're looking at today, Romans 8, uh, 26 and 27. Don't allow, you know, uh, the doctrines of men to get you in a place where you're confused or where you just give in to what they say because they seem like they, they're sincere. Well, they may be sincere, but they're sincerely wrong because what they're saying about, oh, you know, these things, it's not talking about, you know, praying in tongues and stuff like that. It's talking about something else. No, that's not what it's talking about. The Bible interprets itself. Jesus speaks for himself. His Holy Spirit speaks for himself. Again, he says, likewise, the spirit also helps in our weaknesses. We do not know what we should pray for as we ought, and we don't all the time. But the spirit himself makes intercession for us with groanings which cannot be uttered. That, that's talking about he intercedes on our behalf, but he's using our vocal cords. We're speaking, but it's the Holy Spirit speaking through us, the perfect will of God. And those groanings are going forth up to the Father. And that's how victory is going to be accomplished. That's how situations are going to turn around. By allowing the Holy Spirit to use you, you're a vessel, you're a conduit of the Holy Spirit. Just like when we're laying hands on people to to to, to pray that they get they get well. Well, it's not us that are healing; it's the Holy Spirit using us. We're the conduit, we're the vessel. We have authority in Jesus' name, but it's the Holy Spirit Himself that that is accomplishing the uh, the healing and the deliverance. But we have to be willing vessels because we're the body of Christ. Think about it. Now, he who searches the hearts, let's read it again, knows what the mind of the spirit is. He knows what the perfect will is because he makes intercession for the saints according to the will of God. He intercedes for us, but our part is to allow him to use us. We have to open our mouths. We have to sit back and have our hands folded and think that everything's just going to fall on our laps because we said a sinner's prayer. Or even because we were baptized in the Holy Spirit, we have to open our mouths and allow the Holy Spirit to speak through us. Those groanings, those utterances in tongues that will, you know, obliterate situations. 
because there's a lot of things happening out there. A lot of people are, are in bondage. They're in addictions. They're in all kinds of stuff and, and all kinds of messes, and they don't know how to get out of them. Well, pray in the Spirit. Yes, absolutely pray in your, your, your natural language. But don't just limit it to that. I'm not saying that you're not supposed to ever pray in your natural language. But when you get to that place where you, your, your flesh is weak and you just don't know what to pray, or, or you prayed and prayed and prayed and you just feel like you're, you're not getting anywhere, that's when you need to sit back and say, you know what, Lord, you take over. Holy Spirit, take over. And just start speaking. Open your mouth. And, the, and, the, and when you start opening your mouth in faith and being obedient, guess what? Those tongues are going to flow. And guess what? They're going to go straight to the Father because he understands them. The Holy Spirit's praying through you. And that perfect will of God is being done. And that is an awesome thing. Like I said, it's a powerful weapon that we have against the enemy. Because he doesn't understand what we're praying. He can't thwart that prayer. Now, when you're praying in your natural, you say things. He can make the telephone ring. Who makes somebody come to the door and knock on the door. He can, you know, try to get you discouraged to say, oh, you're not praying right. You know, that's not, you know, that's just something of your own mind. But he can't interrupt or thwart the prayer of the spirit in tongues. He can't do it because it's the perfect will of God. It's spirit led. And it's the Holy Spirit praying through us. So he can't mess that up. He may try, but he won't be able to. See, that's what I want you to understand. Again, that's why I, I make these programs to explain the scriptures. It's not enough just to read them and, and then and you don't know what you've read and then you just listen to what people say and then it doesn't line up. No, we have to have the full understanding so that we can walk in the victory of it so that we can know how, what the word says and we can put it into practice and keep the devil under our feet where he belongs. And that's something that is awesome. But... If we don't know what the scripture says, if we're ignorant of them, then we can be led astray. The Bible says even the elect can be deceived. But don't be deceived. Don't be cheated by the doctrines of men. Understand what the will of the Lord is and that you have been given your prayer language of tongues for a reason. Yes, to build you up on your most holy faith, but also to defeat and to thwart the enemy's plan so that you can walk in victory. So start understanding Romans 8. Uh, 26 and 27 start walking in the victory of it because when you pray according to the will of God guess what you're going to push all the the garbage and the limits out of the way so really take this seriously and as always remember that the word of God stands forever amen